it took a forklift manufacturer to develop America's first front wheel drive motorhome. Coming up on History on Wheels. <music> Welcome to History on Wheels. I'm Dave Dufour at RVNN.TV, and I'm here with uh, Al Hesselbart, the historian at the RVMH Hall of Fame Museum here in Elkhart, Indiana. How are you doing, Al? I'm doing good, and I'm glad to be with you today. They're great. This is a, a rather unique vehicle that we're standing in front of here as part of the collection. Um, first of all, it's made by a company that we don't really associate with RVs at all anymore. No, because they're no longer involved in RVs, mm -hmm. but this was the product of the Clark Equipment Company, mm -hmm. which was at the time America's leading manufacturer of forklift vehicles, who produced this Clark Cortez mm -hmm. as America's front wheel drive motorhome. Now what, uh, it, f forklifts are front wheel drive, but they steer in the rear. This doesn't do that. No, no, this has conventional front wheel steering. But what, what was the advantage of front wheel drive from the design standpoint? I think the design standpoint is they already had the chassis designed. <laughs> I, I don't know that they realized what we found now as far as traction and drivability mm -hmm. in front wheel vehicles was any part of it. I think they simply had a front wheel drive chassis available and it worked. That's right. Now, uh, was the, now when you say heavy equipment, was this, a, was this a pretty heavy vehicle compared by today's standards? Uh, for size, yes, it is a heavy, heavy-duty RV, right. and continued to be that for its rather short lifespan. Okay, how long, when were these made? This is a what year? This is a '64 version of a vehicle that was first sold in '61 and '62, and lasted into the early '70s. So uh, they and so they got into the early 70s, and at that time just decided to leave the market, or were they just not not well not popular, or what do you think? The early 70s was a terrible time for all RV companies, and their business was in the construction vehicles, so this was a burden on the company. That's right, and and, and uh, as we've uh, we've uh, uh, known uh, those of us who have been in, in and around the industry, a lot of times companies that aren't involved in the RV industry maybe make an investment and get involved, and there's just something a little different about the RV manufacturing business that is uh, unlike what they're used to. Isn't that true? Yeah, I think that's true, and. When times are real good, it can be real good for everybody. Mm -hmm. When it gets a little tougher, you kind of got to know what you're doing more. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's true. All right. Well, we're going to take a look inside this vehicle, and you can tell us a little bit about some of the interesting amenities inside uh, when we come back on uh, History on Wheels. So stick with us. Today's show is brought to you by Angie's List, where you'll find thousands of unbiased reports and reviews about service companies in your area. Whether you're looking for a roofer, plumber, house cleaner, dentist, or even a doctor, Angie's List members share their experiences with each other so that you can choose the service company that's right for your job. Companies can't pay to be on Angie's List, and the reviews come from people just like you who have had experience with the companies mentioned. To find out more, go to rvnn.tv and click on the Angie's List ad. We're back on History on Wheels, and we're looking at a 1964 Clark Cortez. This is the com this was the motorhome built by the same company that you see their name on all kinds of forklifts and other heavy equipment, uh, but no longer on motorhomes. No, not since the 70s. That's right. And th this had some kind of unique features inside, and, and one of them was that it does have some features that look have they're borrowed from buses and you know uh, mass transit and even aircraft uh, types of design features that they've incorporated inside. Yeah, it really does. Uh, one of the features in here is the fact that it has overhead storage bins mm -hmm. like buses and airplanes in the in the design inside. It also has the way the bed configures from the dinette and the front seat to make more or less a bunk bed with an upper and lower bed area. And how many did we sleep in here? 
four was advertised, but you had to be real good friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, some people are. But I noticed that the, 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 the uh, overhead cabinetry is not unusual in RVs today, but this particular look, which really, really is reminiscent of uh, the overhead bin in your uh, standard 727, is uh, not what you see every day today. Yes, the, the contoured and the shape mm -hmm, of it, right. the radius front and so forth was quite different from any other RV. Okay, well, and the, now the airline the airline uh, analogy kind of falls apart a little bit when you go around and look at the front end of this thing. And like a lot of RVs at that time, it has a pretty flat nose, a little like driving a big brick down the road aerodynamically. Isn't that true? Aerodynamics was not a big point of concern at that time. And yes, it was like pushing a barn door down the road. <laughs> Right, but but of course uh, gas was cheaper, so maybe that was all right then. Uh, one other one other interesting factor in this is the use is, is the way the hot water heater works here. Yes, it is rather unique, especially for the early '60s, in that this unit does have an on-demand water heater without any tank. That's right. Yeah, and so uh, that's that's one of those things that's kind of tricky to get used to, but it does save a little bit of uh, energy in the long run. And it's popular in many RVs and even in a lot of apartments and hotels today. Right. Well, uh, thanks for showing us this little bit of uh, RV history today on History on Wheels. And uh, thanks, thanks for being with us, Al. Thank you. like this from the world of RVs, head to RVNN.tv.